Hi my little treasures, welcome to Tea and Tarot. This is the last Tea and Tarot episode of the year. I'm going to be continuing with them onwards through 2015 with potentially some breaks so that I can focus on other things on the Saturday um, but, but generally it's going to be an ongoing theme and for this episode I decided to focus on the comfort zone and what that means to each of us at this time and what the cards have to teach us about expanding our comfort zone or jumping beyond the comfort zone. Um, so let's get right into it, I'm going to be using Dame Darcy's Mermaid Tarot. I know that it's um, it's such a big deal at the moment, it's a hot topic for everybody in the tarot world and so many people have joined me in uh, purchasing it also so um, I know I've got a lot of people to play with in the Dame Darcy Sandpit which is awesome and I've chosen Lapsang Souchong for my tea but I think after this I'm going to go downstairs and make myself some Echinacea and Cranberry because I'm really not feeling um, like myself today I think I need perking up but this will do for now this is kind of like sipping on a bonfire for those of you who've never tried it uh, sounds weird but actually it's kind of magical I'm going to start with one of my um, combinations. I know sometimes I do these combinations of cards that I feel work together to produce um, a narrative or to kind of illustrate a concept. So I'm going to start with the Two of Swords and the Two of Pentacles because I think these two work really nicely together when kind of tackling what I want to tackle about the comfort zone, which is this. There are two distinct ways of looking at the comfort zone itself as a concept. The first is that it's your happy place, it's the place where you feel comfortable, it's the place where you're your most productive and you're most pragmatic and you're most, most active. Um, it's where you feel secure in your abilities, you know, your comfort zone. So it's actually a positive thing. And the other way of looking at it is as though it is a prison of your own making. It's a place where you kind of, you feel so complacent, so comfortable that you're scared of taking risks, you're scared of moving forward, so you're kind of remaining stagnant, you're not really moving anywhere. So the comfort zone has become restricted. And actually one tends to lead into another, you know, the first definition can quite often morph into the second definition. So really I think the Two of Swords illustrates the importance of intuition in determining for you what the comfort zone is really doing for you in your life at this moment. So for you right now, would you say that your comfort zone is your happy place, the place where you're being productive, the place where you're getting things done? Would you say that you don't really need to kind of try new things or take risks at the moment because you're on the pathway that you feel most comfortable with and you're really making things happen there? Or would you say that by contrast, you are stuck in your comfort zone? You know that you need to branch out. You know that you need to try something new. You know that you need to shake things up, but you're scared of doing so. You're scared of taking that risk. You're scared of, of moving into new territory. Really the only person that can decide upon this is you yourself and that's why I think the Two of Swords is such a fitting image because you know we know, you know, so many of us know with these classic images of the Two of Swords that really there's a decision to be made or there's a problem to be solved, there's a contrast between two opposing forces or ideals or pathways and actually what's happened is that she's blindfolded, the figure has to go within to find the answer, she can't look at the facts and the kind of uh, the, the lay of the land if you like, she has to go within and really work from the inner voice and I think quite often that's how we need to be with the comfort zone and the people around us might have input for us, our friends, our family members, our partners might turn to us and say hey you know um, you're really stuck right now, you need to try something new but it, some, a lot of the time it doesn't matter how much outside input we get, we need to go within to decide for ourselves whether or not we are sabotaging our own progress and whether or not the comfort zone really has actually Actually become restrictive and unhealthy and unhelpful. So I'd say that's why the Two of Swords is such a great card for kind of focusing on how you're getting on and whether or not your comfort zone has become toxic in some way. The Two of Pentacles is another play on this same theme, um, but basically it's really making the decision about what you want to do. You know, if you realise that your comfort zone has become restrictive and that you do need to kind of branch out and go in another direction or try something new, it's really about deciding what that first step is going to be. And I always say, you know, don't scare yourself beyond measure, don't scare yourself out of doing what you need to do. You can choose to have a look at one kind of overarching goal and then you can cut it up into small, uh, actionable realistic manageable tasks and you can actually time those tasks you can make a decision you know I'm going to do these two or three things this week which are going to allow me to kind of explore beyond my comfort zone and that's what I'm going to be doing 
and so you have that chance to check in with yourself each time, you have that chance to congratulate yourself each time, and you're not being overwhelmed or intimidated out of action by the magnitude of the goal, by the magnitude of what you're trying to get to, because you've cut it down into these more realistic, manageable segments which feel more comfortable to you, which feel like worthy challenges and realistic challenges, and so you can keep checking in with yourself and giving yourself that positive, you know, internal monologue and just talking yourself up and enjoying the feeling of ticking those things off, you know, those actionable things that you need to do really enjoy the feeling of ticking those things off this is what I do you know the big goal is is like the sun I don't want to look at it but those little actionable points each day or each week that I've got to get done I really enjoy ticking them off and just having that moment of congratulating myself for that and feeling satisfied because of that on Facebook I recently posted an image of myself I was editing a tea and tarot video and I posted an image of myself sipping tea and I said on that image that I'm really glad that I work with a little bit of editing now because I can cut out the long kind of gulps <laughs> which means I can drink the beverage of the goddess until my heart is content but you guys don't actually have to watch all the gulping and a few people said oh keep some of the gulping in I quite like the gulping that's kind of like my cue to take my tea as well so yeah don't cut it all out so yeah for you guys a little bit of gulping has been left in Perfect. I've decided to use the hanged man as a focus on perception and how we can change our perception of what's happening or how we can kind of focus on which perception would be most helpful for us at any given time. As I think most people who've worked with a tarot for any length of time would say, one of the key definitions of the hanged man is based around this idea of perception and how our perception can be skewed or how we can in fact kind of choose a different way of looking at something in accordance with what's most helpful and what would be most productive for us. Uh, the hangman is also about seeing when our perception is biased or when our perception is unhelpful and taking action on that. So really the reason that I chose the hanged man is because I feel that again there are these two distinct ways of looking at the comfort zone or looking at how you want to approach it. A lot of people talk about leaving the comfort zone, you know, just flying the coop, launching out of your comfort zone. And a lot of memes online, a lot of quotations online um, have this same kind of idea, this idea of flying the nest, leaving the comfort zone, going on to new territory. But actually some people don't really mesh well, they don't gel very well with that idea because they kind of see themselves as people who need to be reasonably comfortable with what they're doing in order to actually go through with it. So if the idea is that we're leaving everything that we're comfortable with, we're leaving the familiar to go on into this new territory, I think a lot of people connect that with fear or associate that with trepidation. So what I would say is there's this whole other way of approaching the idea of the comfort zone and that is through talking about expanding it. Expanding it to include new things. I always say there's actually nothing wrong with your comfort zone. Your comfort zone is your home turf. It's where you know that you're comfortable. And quite a lot of the time when you get comfortable with your skills and your abilities and those positive character traits that you bring into action around certain sub uh, subjects and topics, those things are your comfort zone. Those things are where the land lies in your comfort zone. So there's actually nothing wrong with the comfort zone. In a great many ways it can be a positive thing. It's really about deciding when it's become restrictive. So maybe you don't want to think about leaving your comfort zone completely. Maybe you want to take that concept and play with it so that what it really means is that you're expanding the zone to include new things. So you're expanding that line that shows you where the terrain of your comfortability is and you're actually gobbling new things up with it. So new skills, trying new experiences, making new friends, all that kind of thing. Um, that's basically all being included in your comfort zone. And really what this requires is a switch from fear to excitement. And I think a great Great many people um, can understand really that there is this relationship between fear and excitement especially when we're trying to try new things or include new things or kind of test our ability in different things we can feel fear but we can also choose to change our perception we can shift our perspective on that feeling so that what it really becomes is excitement and this is a lot like you know when we say that we choose not to see our obstacles as obstacles as blocks but actually as worthy challenges again this is a choice to change the perspective, it's a choice to change the perception, and that's really what The Hanged Man is all about, so I really wanted to include him in this exploration. The Wheel of Fortune, I'm using this in association with taking a risk, taking a gamble, you know, doing something that you're really not sure whether or not it's gonna pay off, you know, not knowing what the future is gonna hold, not really being certain of the pros and cons of something, but actually just taking that leap. 
and trusting yourself to take that leap and knowing that even if things don't go exactly according to a strict plan, you will be okay. You have within you what it takes to make it through and take the lessons from it and kind of use whatever has happened to you as an opportunity for post-traumatic growth. Um, even if things don't go right, you know, you take that risk regardless because you know that it's better than like standing still and being stagnant. Um, risk taking is a big part of what it means to be comfortable to expand that comfort zone or to play with it or as I like to say dance on the edge of it, dance on the edge of your comfort zone, play with those new energies that are not quite within the realm of your comfortability but which are attractive to you and challenging to you. A lot of people stay stuck in the comfort zone because they're scared of taking a risk and it's that complacency, it's that feeling of I don't have exactly what I want right now, things aren't exactly how I want them to be right now, there is more that I could strive for, there is more that I desire, but I'm comfortable where I am right now, I know where things are, you know, it's better the devil you know, I'm kind of, I understand where the land lies now, if I introduce these new energies and these new desires, there could be chaos, you know, whereas this is stable, it's not exactly what I want, it's not exactly wetting my appetite, but it's stable, it's comfortable, you know, whereas these new energies could bring in something scary. I think quite a lot of the time, particularly at this really exciting time of year where we're just about to come up for this big feeling of renewal and rebirth, you know, I mean that the impact of that energy is building all of the time as we approach New Year. I think it's time to check in with how scared you are of taking risks and how much it really would matter to you if you could take a risk, you know, if you became more comfortable with leaving the place where you are comfortable and exploring new things and trying new ventures, if you were a little bit less afraid of taking a risk, how would that positively impact your life? Is it possible that you're at a point in your life where the idea of taking a risk is scary to you but actually is the thing that you need most of all you need to be able to actually check in with yourself and remind yourself that everything will be okay if you take a risk and that actually maybe that's that's something that's so wholly necessary as I said at the beginning of this episode, your comfort zone can be something which is secure and productive and it can go from that to being unhelpful and restrictive and it's really up to you to decide where the land lies for you on that, you know, and whether your comfort zone has become something that's stale and stagnant and making you unhappy, whether you do need to actually either expand it to include new things or kind of launch beyond it depending on, you know, which way your perspective is, is kind of helped by the notion. Um, the Wheel of Fortune has something to say about that too, you know, it's really asking you, um, was your comfort zone, were you working within the parameters of your comfort zone positively and effectively for a long time, but now, because you're scared of taking a risk to move yourself onto that next plateau, now it's become restrictive, now it's become unhelpful, and do you need to check in with yourself on that? Do you need to be honest with yourself about the fact that your comfort zone was somewhere that you operated within for a while, with gusto, you know, to the best of your ability, harnessing all of your power, but now it's become stale, now you need that new step, you need that fresh expanse of terrain and because you are scared of taking a risk everything has just become a little bit ugly a little bit bitter a little bit sour a little bit dull and maybe it's time for radical acceptance on that fact it is definitely time for radical acceptance on the fact that lapsang Sushong is the nectar of the gods the beverage of the goddess i mean it's just it's like a kiss from divinity itself i don't know what my life would be like without tea but it just wouldn't be as good i do know that for a solid gold fact the Five of Pentacles is very much an image of lack, or at least an image of lack perspective, which is the opposite of abundance perspective. And when we look at what we're lacking, and when we look at the sense of lack that we feel, and when we realise that it's been quite a long time since we've been able to be grateful for what we have in the moment, that actually we really feel this void, we really feel that something is missing for us. I think quite often it can be helpful to decide whether or not there's a connection between that sense of lack which is really building and really becoming impactive and the comfort zone, you know? If you agreed with yourself to dance on the edge of your comfort zone, to try something new, to go where you haven't gone before, would your sense of lack actually subside? Would you feel more abundant? Would you feel like more gateways were open to you? Like you had more opportunity? Like you had more to grasp hold of? Sometimes our sense of what we don't have is directly related to how scared we are to move beyond the comfort zone or expand the comfort zone. And when we look at the things that we're scared of doing, 
the fear of taking that risk for whatever reason, then we realize that actually that risk is the doorway to a greater feeling of abundance and a greater emergence of abundance, abundance in the material realm. So I think sometimes there's a connection there. And, you know, before I finished up, I just really wanted to remind you that there is a connection there sometimes. And that maybe if you're feeling a sense of lack, and if you're wondering whether or not 2015, if you're watching this at around that time, is going to be, you know, everything for you in terms of abundance that you want it to be, maybe you need to ask yourself if you're stuck in your comfort zone and if maybe the confines of your comfort zone are stopping you from having that level of abundance that you seek. I wanted to mention the Three of Pentacles and the Knight of Wands as well finally as kind of like two bonus cards for you. I really wanted to talk about the fact that it's much easier to expand the comfort zone and kind of play with your ideas about what the comfort zone is and how helpful it is to you if you have a really, really fixed goal in mind and if you are totally turned on and plugged in by that goal. So the Knight of Wands I really wanted to use just to connect you with that sense of fire and dynamism and excitement that comes when you really crystallise a goal that feels really good to you. And I know that I, I tell you guys quite a lot of the time, and I've said it in video after video after video, sometimes your goals evolve, okay? Your goals do not stay stagnant, they don't stay the same. In fact, I think probably the first episode of Tea and Tarot was about goals, and in that, in that first video I mentioned the importance of uh, checking in with your goals and deciding if they are in fact still your goals, because yes, goals can change, and yes, you are entitled to actually allow your goals to evolve as you evolve and change and transform as you change and transform. So there may have been a shift and maybe your goals just aren't fiery and electric and exciting and dynamic anymore for you and maybe you need to check in with that. So I guess what I'm saying is maybe just make sure that you feel like the Knight of Wands when you look at your goals and if you don't reassess them, redefine them, break them apart and put them back together in a different shape, you know, think about how you want your goals to really feel. If they don't feel like that, do something about it. The Three of Pentacles, and you know what, the image of the Three of Pentacles in the Dame Darcy deck is incredibly, um, it's, it's almost more explanatory, I think, than the Rider Waite, because the Three of Pentacles is about building, it's about craftsmanship, it's about really developing something, seeing the fruits of it in the material realm, when it's just starting to come together and it's starting to look like what it's supposed to be, that vision is actually becoming clear and it's becoming made. And with the Three of Pentacles in the Mermaid deck, actually, uh, there is this incredible sculpting going on. I think I've got autofocus on, so I don't know how well this is going to happen. But there's this incredible sculpting. The mermaid is actually sculpting this beautiful image of this abundant kind of maiden goddess person with pentacles over her and her long hair flowing. And so really, she's sculpting a vision of the abundance and bringing it into reality, which is such an exciting idea for this card. And the fact that it's all happening underwater is just like really cool to me as well. Um, but yeah, the, the image in this card is particularly illustrative of the actual uh, key energy, the universal standardized energy for the three of pentacles and i just wanted to use this card to remind you to work diligently towards your goals um to not tire yourself out to keep coming back to it and chipping a little bit away and a little bit away and enjoying standing back over time and seeing how far you've come and how many more bricks you've laid or how, how much more of the marble has taken shape if you will um it's really just about being consistent being diligent being committed being kind to yourself not going over the top, not overwhelming yourself, not overworking yourself, not burning the candle at both ends. Uh, really be real with yourself and strike a deal with yourself about what you're going to do, what's too much for you to do, and when your expectations m might be too high, and when your ex expectations are actually uh, comfortable, you know, pushing you gently, pushing you just beyond, but not pushing you to the point of breakdown. <laughs> um, so really those are two final cards that I just wanted to bring into the mix with regard to this discussion and I hope that it's helped you to maybe think a little bit more about whereabouts your comfort zone is helpful and where you're being productive within it and whereabouts you may need to expand it slash move beyond it as we head into 2015 in particular I really hope these insights have been helpful very much love blessed be